In terms of woke language and gender ideology, what is cross-dressing men? Uh, and how are they different than trans-identified biological men? Um, is the media giving transgender people a pass by calling this group of sexual predators cross-dressing men? Take a look at this story out of Boston today. Now, I made sure to screenshot this and then I'm going to show you a video later because I am about 85% sure that this will be taken down soon. Um, because this is an awful story. A group of four children under 10 were being kept in a dirty room full of drugs, alcohol, and sex toys. And you can see here, it says they were being held by six cross-dressing men. Uh, police only found out about this because one of them had a heart attack and died and they were called to resuscitate that person. Now, obviously, these are children being abused by male anatomies. Um, but as a journalist, you know, I'm interested in the semantics and how this may further harm children if we don't look at this. Uh, in the media, if the media had called these perpetrators trans women because they're men who presented as women and that's sort of the way the media does now if a trans person commits a crime that's why we get these headlines of like you know they assaulted with her penis right um daughter of so and so kills the father that kind of thing even though we know that these are biological men um the well, and even go ahead i was gonna say really quick even the term transvestite was used to be used to describe them even that could probably cause confusion and why they didn't use that and right. cross-dressing men. Uh, so the idea that we are calling them men, do we see this progress or are we removing the term transgender in a way that makes us ignore the sexual fetishism inside of this movement, which means that more children will get hurt? Right. So um, if the media had called them trans women, then the headline would have said that the children were being abused by women, which is obviously an insult to the children and what they've been through, something horrifically unimaginable and, you know, probably minimizes what they've been through and also an assault to uh, insulting to women. Um, but also this is a sidestep around transgenderism altogether. It allows us to put aside the idea that trans ideology got its start. It started as autogynophilia, which is the how do you describe that? It's when a man loves the feminine aspects of himself and wants other people to see him as feminine, as a sexual fetish. Um, in fact, a study done in Sweden in 2005 found that 2.8% of males experience sexual arousal in response to cross-dressing. So we are supposed to not question whether or not trans ideology can harm people. And now we have evidence that it can. Will we leave this one alone and say, oh, they weren't trans, they were cross-dressers. That's a different thing. Let's move aside. Or will we now be able to admit that many people leading this ideology are hijacking the movement for their own perverted gains? Uh, I think that would be a helpful thing to admit so that we are able to parse out who has gender ideology in a way that will harm nobody and who is using gender ideology to advance perversions. Right. So basically as someone in the chat says, basically grown men abusing little children and the media covers it up. Right. So we're deciding who are we protecting here, right? right. They are deciding well, to the, protect the perpetrators, the perpetrators and not the, the children. perverts. Yeah. I mean, imagine now what, what would the article read when you're reading about BTK now, the, the BTK killer, the serial killer. He, he did that. He, he dressed yeah. as a woman and would, you know, that's a great I, point. I don't know Who's how much that? I can say on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the BTK killer. Well, you don't have to go into all of that, but yeah, that's exactly what he yeah. did. And yeah, and so they would probably, I mean, we've seen it. Why Why do we still not know about the Tennessee um, the shooter? Why do we still not know what was in that, uh, that um, what was it, the, not dossier, what am I trying to say, the diary, the, uh, what do you call it? Dossier. The, oh, the manifesto. Manifesto, so. that's the word I'm trying to say. Um, we still don't know about that. They're protecting, They've. They, there's a track record now of protecting these perpetrators. Yes, um, now, most coverage of this horrific story does not mention the cross-dressing at all. It's just that children were kept in this sort of room of sexual horrors, and that's it. Um, and that's an unconscionable lie, an omission. 
Uh, I saved this clip again. I saved it because what's interesting is like when you download videos from a website, you know, you usually get whatever it is you can see. So I, I use a program that extracts videos. I tried to extract this video and all I got was the live news broadcast from last night in Boston. And this piece that's on this website was omitted from the live broadcast, but it still is up. I was not able to download it. So I did a screen movie, which is why the audio is a little bit tinny because this man says cross-dressing men were the perpetrators. That again will be removed from consciousness in order to protect trans ideology, but watch him say it anyway. We do have our own record now. First responders were called here to these apartments on Saturday for an apparent cardiac arrest. When they got here, they discovered someone had died and also found that several people were hiding children in a back room. Tonight, four children less than 10 years old are in DCF custody after authorities and public officials say they were found in an apartment with six cross-dressing men, sex toys, drugs, and alcohol. Firefighters discovered them after one of those adults died at the apartment. Well, it's obviously sickening, you know, to, to hear from those that were there. Okay. Um, again, I just want to present this because distorted reality has real world consequences. Um, and, you know, what you think of as acceptance and progressive values must be critically examined because we can't just say like, well, oh, that hurts our ideology. We can't discuss it. Yeah, go ahead, Philip. Well, I just, I find it weird. I find it weird that they, why, like, in that instance, why is what they're wearing any, have any bearing on anything at all? It'd be like, they're saying like six men in track suits. Like, what, why, why does what they were, like their clothing have anything to do with the story? Yeah. It's just uh, a yeah, they were all wearing to bring up to me. Six, six Mets fans. Because they're feeding us a way to sidestep the transgender ideology. This, that's my hypothesis. Yeah. Because if we call right. them no, trans, yeah, it's, it's extremely uncomfortable for this movement, especially during Pride Month, you guys, right? Right? Yeah. Um, I think that they're giving us, yeah, they're giving us a, a sort of a more comfortable way to talk about it, so we don't have to actually well, and, talk about it. And I wonder, like, imagine the story if those six cross-dressing men saved those children, they would probably be praised as trans. Sure. Oh, good point. Yeah. 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 These six heroes. These are transgender heroes that saved these children but right. because because they're living in squalor and man died and their sex toys and alcohol. And these kids are living in this filthy, awful condition. And who knows what what sort of perversion was being perpetrated on these children. They're just cross dressing men. Right. Look the yeah. other way. Um, you know, I think that this is if you're willing to look at it. It's proof that the trans ideology is so many things stuffed into one thing. It has very little to do with the social contagion that is taking part on young girls, um, you know, being sort of put on young girls who are going through puberty. It's it's different, but there are legitimate perverts who will benefit from it if we are unwilling to look it directly in the eye. Here's another real world consequence of gender ideology. A new Gallup poll shows that support for same sex marriage has dropped by 7% last year. Sorry, that's hard to see. 71% uh, in 2022 supported gay marriage. That's down now to 64%. Uh, could this be because gender ideology has hijacked gay rights into something totally different and in my opinion, homophobic? Uh, the culture wars about gender dysphoria presents this false equivalency between sexual deviance and homosexuality doesn't need to be like that. Um, it also indicates that gender preference is bigoted, which causes abuse and exclusion of lesbian and gay groups. That is happening. It's no wonder that gay rights are being eroded under gender, gender ideology. Who saw this coming? Everybody who's gender critical. Kathleen Stock from the get go. Uh, because trans rights are not gay rights. They are two opposite things. Gay people well, actually why... need biological sex to be real or they don't exist. And we are watching them be erased. I was going to say, and that's why there's a movement to remove the T because it's like, it, it is guilty by association. I think a lot of people now, because the there, there's this, this small LGBTQ minority in there that are yeah. very loud and doing nefarious things. It, it's like the whole group is guilty by proxy. So it's like, they they want away from that. They don't want that because it is affecting their rights. Yeah, yeah, look and look at the you know look at the the the, the gay flag. I mean, look what happened there. 
It's been infiltrated. Yes. You've got this like now Chevron that's come on from the side. It's like infiltrating it. And then you're adding in now, uh, you know, all sorts of other symbols and things to this this flag. Yeah. We've gone over how that was tacked on to the civil rights movement um, that brought about uh, gay rights. I won't go over it again. Um, but I think that it's interesting because, you know, again, this movement has been hijacked by ideologues that prey on the insecurity of pubescent children and also prey on open doors and access to children. Um, and I think that if we really want to be progressive, we start with the vulnerable first. And the vulnerable are not men who like cross-dressing. The vulnerable are children. Children. Yeah. Uh, children first. Um, speaking of children, one physician at a U major U.S. hospital gave this interview recently, uh, called themselves a wh whistleblower, about how medical mandates are no longer based on science. Um, I, I don't know if it's a he or a she, actually, uh, because it, it's anonymous, because physicians are punished for speaking out about this. So I'm going to use they, but not for gender ideology, but because I legitimately don't know. Uh, he or she says that COVID and gender ideology are are linked inextricably. Um, says, you know, during 2020, transgender ideology and COVID became inextricably linked. Normally, doctors operate by the authority of the professional societies that govern our specific practice. That worked because the individuals in those institutions were reliable, intelligent, and thoughtful. But with COVID in 2020, 2020, we started getting me medical decrees without peer review or evidence. You saw this with masks, social distancing, and emergency use authorization. Those decrees were expressed as something everyone had to do without justification based on sound science. And then came the censorship. And he says, you know, you were punished if you spoke out about this. Like, hey, b how do we know that? Where's the science about masks? What about this study that already pr proved that masks can... Uh, cars cause uh, negative effects in your health. Can't. Yeah, shut up. Things. You're not allowed to ask these questions. Um, the next slide, I think this is this is really interesting because he's talking about how you're not supposed to do harm to your patients. You should be committed to never harming them. He says, in reality, or she, uh, when you affirm these individuals' gender ident identity, what you're doing is affirming their hatred for themselves. You have these children who are going through these confusing times, difficult times. When you affirm this belief system, what you're doing is telling them, you hate yourself at this moment. I will affirm that. You have to ask ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, why do these people have such high rates of suicide? Because we're affirming that they should hate themselves and that they should try to destroy themselves. So again, the progressive media sort of hops around these words and concepts because they think it's enlightened and educated and the right thing to do. Um, in my opinion, not looking at this more critically is the cowardly thing to do. So we uh, decide well, to and, look and, at these and, awful and truths. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.